everyone, I hope you guys are all having a great week. So I've decided to make this video for two reasons. First and main one being that I finally did set up my GoFundMe, and a link will be in the description below for that. But the bigger overarching narrative here is I want to tell you guys what I actually plan to do with this place. As some of you might be aware, I don't really see this as a house project so much as I think of it as an art project or a community project. So I wanted to share you guys my thoughts and opinions and ideas of what I actually want to see this place becoming as I near completion. So in some videos previously, I've made the comment that I think of this place sort of as a museum, or that I want this place to be a museum. And while yes, it is always going to be my home, I plan to live here until they put me in my grave, I do want this place to be a museum of sorts. But within that, I want it to be a living museum. So when people come through my door, I want people to be able to sit down, pick up objects, and really to be able to live like a Victorian did. You know, to understand these objects, these items in this house in a way that you can actually touch and feel and be part of it. And I don't want that to ever change. So my goal in the future with that is to make for sure that I can at least one or two times a week have essentially an open house that's free for people to come and at least explore the first floor. And while yes, these are rooms I'm going to occupy and utilize and use, I definitely want them to be shared as well. I've spoken to you guys also about the fact that I want people to be able to come and stay here as guests as well. I'm trying to figure out what that looks like and I'm not exactly for sure what it will look like. It certainly won't be a bed and breakfast because nobody in their right mind wants me cooking them breakfast. However, Mr. and Mrs. Brown's room, so the two nicer rooms on the second floor, and the vet clinic in the basement, I want all of those to be open, so if people do want to come and spend a night here, or a few nights here, there's the option to do that. It will be something that won't be open directly to the public, per se, but I want it to always be open to subscribers. Because as you guys know, <laughs> none of this stuff is very cheap, and I want people who respect the work that I've done here to be able to come in and have that experience for themselves. I don't want it to be seen as a hotel. I want people in here who are passionate like I am and who understand the work and the blood and the sweat and the tears and the um, huge part of myself that I've put into this place. So when I do finally get that whole thing set up, it will be for you subscribers only. Beyond just the house itself, so for those of you who might not know, the original owner of my house was a guy named Charles S. Brown. He was the president of the Hall & Brown Woodworking Machine Company and he produced woodworking machinery, so the tools that built the woodwork. And a lot of those machines are still out there. I've been very fortunate to be able to get a few myself. And of course, the goal isn't to run a, an antique wood shop in the basement, but to build an outbuilding on Mr. Hall's lot, which is the lot next door to my house, and to build essentially a Hall and Brown museum, but that's a working wood shop as well. And I know some of you guys have been following for a while know that I plan to run that wood shop with a line shaft. If I'm able to achieve that, it'll be one of the only wood shops in Missouri that run off line shafts. Certainly the only one in St. Louis. And one of just really a handful in the United States, period. And again, just like the house, I hope to be able to give tours of that building. Uh, I've even been starting to work on renderings and uh, ideas of what that building could look like and planning at least in my head about how I want to operate it and show people inside. Also, if I can acquire Mr. Hall's lot, which again is the lot next door, other than the workshop itself, I really hope to be able to build a really nice, big, beautiful gazebo and just a really elaborate, beautiful Victorian garden. And that's something I think I could have hours on and allow people in, you know, dusk till dawn daily. And again, I think that'd be a cool little community resource that could be out there if people can go and just have a seat in essentially what is a tiny little park. So beyond the actual structure itself here and the house itself and the, the, the wood shop and the garden itself, there's other things I really want to do. Because I will have an amazing workshop, because I will have all of these tools, because I will have all this know-how, all this knowledge about plaster and woodwork and millwork and all these different things, I want to continue after this process building and fixing other houses in the area. Not my own project, but others' projects. And since the house itself actually at some point will have an end date, even though I think I'll be working on this place my entire life, at some point there will be more free time to take on other projects. 
And since I don't ever plan on stopping the content creation, because I have a lot of fun with it, I love talking with you guys, I thought about how I wanted to incorporate taking on new projects and keeping up with content creation for the channel. And I found these channels that do something that I thought was kind of cool. There are these grass cutting channels that literally go and mow people's lawn. But what they'll do a lot of the time is knock on somebody's door, cut their grass for free, and to me it seems like a win-win. The guy cutting the grass makes his money on YouTube. YouTube gets content, which is what YouTube wants. The viewers get a very satisfying and pleasing video, and the homeowner gets their grass cut for free. My thought is, why couldn't I do that for people's houses here in St. Louis? Especially people who don't have the means or the knowledge on how to fix these houses properly. Maybe I could go knock on people's doors, ask if they want me to, to fix a part of their mansard roof or maybe part of their failing stone facade. Do the work for free. I can make money via the YouTube videos. You guys get some really cool content and my city gets another house saved. So that's something I wanna do in the future as well. And again, because I've acquired these skills and because I'll have a workshop and these and ways to make really lovely woodwork and stuff that a lot of people don't have the access to. And at that point, I'll, I'll have done so much plaster and so many other of these old world skills I'd really like to do classes and teach other people how to take care of their houses or people who are just interested in preservation as a general rule of thumb. And I would like to offer classes like this for just material costs alone. And some people might ask why, why do that? You can make money off that. Well, why is because I can't possibly fix everything wrong with all these buildings here in St. Louis myself. So if I can instruct more people on all these different ways about how to fix these buildings. And not even just St. Louis, but you know, the world, the, the US, and get more people to care about preservation through doing things like that. I think that's a win-win. And to begin, because I'm just one man, maybe I could teach enough people and get enough people interested in these things that maybe we can start a volunteer group of people who wanna go around and just fix things. I myself personally, I think get a lot of deep satisfaction when I can fix something, when I can repair something, when I can make something look good as new. And I think there are many others who love that as well. You know, maybe we can get enough people together and find a city-owned property, fix it over a year, and set it up as, I don't know, a community center or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas. <laughs> I just want to do whatever I can to help at least the built environment of my city. Because I know it has an impact. I talk to my neighbors. I hear though, I thought that place was a goner. You know, thank you for saving that building. And then I also get the other questions. Hey, I've seen what you've done with your building. Could you show me how to do that? You know, I don't know how many homes I've been invited into on, on just my block alone, just to look at a problem that they're having. You know, and at least give my two cents about how I would go about correcting that problem. And as you've guys seen with one of my neighbors, I've taken her door <laughs> and uh, her one of her mantles from her house and brought it here and fixed them. And honestly, going through this building and speaking with my neighbors really brought me a huge sense of community as well. Which I think is really important and extremely missing in most neighborhoods I've ever lived in. And I think it's important, especially in the neighborhoods like my own, that have been forgotten for so many years and neglected for so many years. Saving these structures and showing people what we really have here, how beautiful of a built environment we have, I think is really important. It builds civic pride. It builds pride in your city and your community. And just speaking with my neighbors, I know that to be true. So I suppose those are my big points, my big goals, the big things I really want to achieve here. Do all of them come true? I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. But currently, these are the goals that I'm working towards. And I know a lot of them are big goals. And it's possible that I might not achieve any of them. But I think I would be really disappointing myself if I at least didn't try. And I hope that also clears up some of the questions I get about how I plan on living in this house and things like that. But note again, I don't really see this project as a house restoration project or a renovation project as much as I see it as an art project, as a passion project. I put in the work and I do the best I can for this place because I love doing it. I'd also like to hear from you guys. What ideas do you guys have for what we could utilize my space for? As always, thank you guys for watching. That's the end of this one. But I couldn't set up the GoFundMe and ask you guys to donate if I didn't at least give you guys a clear outline of what I actually plan to do here. 
And please, if you guys do donate, make sure you guys help the people in your world, yourself included in that, before you even think about helping me or sending me anything. Thank you guys, as always, for your continued support. You don't know how much you've changed my world by just watching these videos. So again, thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you guys Friday night. Goodbye.